Greetings! Just listening to some skillet to get us ready for tonight. Well, the skillet pumps me up! <clears throat> Makes me <clears throat> crazy. Waking up. Love that. Waking And Maggie up. has a new box from Chewy.com, so she should be a little less interrupted. She's a box animal. She thinks that every single box, no matter what kind of box, belongs exclusively to her. It's true. So she destroys them, and I pick them up. I'm not sure I signed up for that part of Just that. Just wear a house off. I'm not right sure I signed up for that, but so let me uh, send out my invitations and let people know that we're here because we're not yesterday. We're today. We are Thursday. But I do have to give a shout out to uh, my counterparts that I saw in Pierre yesterday and today. And they had some encouraging words for not only myself, but my beautiful wife. Oh. For prayer and share. Well, that's so, very nice. I appreciate that. Um, I really appreciate your encouraging words. And um, we always need encouragement, right? We need a lot of things. <laughs> and encouragement is on the list. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, just got back, so we were just rushing around, and we cranked up the tunes, and here we are. So, forgive us if we're a little disheveled here, but it's all good. Thank How's you. That? Good. So I'm not pretentious. I can't open my, I can't open my water because of my hand brace. I'm not that above everything that I have to have Andrew open my water. <laughs> Kind of a person I am married to can't open her own water bottle. Well, hey, um, <laughs> tonight's subject is uh, by request by my wife. I did the sermon last Sunday on forgive and forget. Never forget. So she uh, she asked me if we could talk about that tonight, and I said absolutely. Um, so here we are. Um, you know, I didn't look up who was number one on the Billboard chart. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I sent you something, actually, that was... Um, I think Lauren Deagle was, again, on top of the Billboard. But there was somebody else who was on top of the Billboard for a different song. Oh. And I, I thought I posted it on to our uh, Campbell County Christian, but I can't remember. But I've been really busy on Instagram, adding... Um, following people, oh, cool. Christian artists that I haven't been following for whatever strange reason, like Bethel Music, and um, so, yeah, so I've been busy on Instagram kind of following, refollowing all those other Christian uh, groups that I haven't been given love to, so. That's what's on my, uh, one of the things I like to do list is to get a Campbell County Christian on Instagram, absolutely. Nice. Yes. Yeah, I love Instagram. I see so many great things on Instagram. I think we've like, you know. Got the Facebook thing. As the experts well, say, once you got that platform figured out, you're doing well. Instagram's a totally different ballgame. I mean, Instagram's, right, it's <laughs> it's pictures. I mean, primarily it's pictures. You know, so it's different. Yeah. It's different than, yeah, that that's the box, the Chewy.com box going across the, you hear the, that. the kitchen tiles. Please bear with us. So, yeah, tonight, forgive and forget. And... Um, you know, I was doing reading as I always do, kind of a bookworm or email thing at that. And I saw uh, that according to some uh, retail outlets of Christian books, that 70% of Christian book sales are to women. I found that interesting. Mm, that doesn't really surprise me. I mean... I would bet that if you did a similar search on like uh, self help, you'd probably find the same statistics. You think? Yeah, I think I think you'd find more women buying self help, self improvement, uh, exercise books than men. Yeah, but I'm talking Christian books. Yeah, though. I'm just saying. I'm not, books. I'm not surprised by that. Okay, and you know we're, uh, when I was growing up, like my uncle Richie was avid, avid reader. In fact, I was fortunate to get part of his library yeah, it's awesome. when he passed away yeah. and so obviously he was a, a big influence in my Christian life along with my, my dad my dad always read the Bible so um, thank you and um, but yeah it's, it's, it's like 
Yeah, is that I don't good know. or bad? I, is that I, good or bad? I don't know. I think on, guys. maybe uh, my experience has been just uh, women in general tend to be a little bit more of, a, of readers, whether it's because... You know, men are doing the yard work, maybe. I, I don't know. That's really a stereotypical comment right, right there. Right. So not politically correct. Well, that's what we are. Uh, but um, I don't know. I just, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that women, like like last night and you were home, I was so excited to lay in bed and read my book. <laughs> uh, I'm almost done reading my Will Graham book. Uh, through my father's eyes, which is super good book. Really like it. Uh, recommend it highly. Recommend it. Yeah, really easy read. Uh, different perspective into the life and times of Billy Graham. Um, so yeah, I I have it on the Kindle version, um, and I just I just never have enough time in the day to read. And by the time I get done work, like so many others, I don't want to be on the computer. I don't want to be doing. I'm on the computer all day. I don't want to be on the computer. Uh, and sometimes I just want to watch King and Queens and not use my brain. Defrag. Mm, defrag. But there's a little too much defragging going on in my <laughs> brain right now, and I need it to be get back into my books. Cool. So, yeah. So I'm I'm not, I'm not surprised by those statistics, but um, yeah, we'll have to do a little Google search and kind of compare that. Who else is buying other kinds of books? Or you know what'd be interesting to know? Who is downloading downloading the most Christian music? Is it women or is it men? I don't know if they, they can keep track well, of that or not. Who hey, knows? I don't know. I'm sure they do. They keep track of everything else in the world. Well, <laughs> there's yeah. nothing private anymore. <laughs> True. So that's your to-do list for the week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just Google it or Siri Just, will tell yeah. you. Siri will tell you. <laughs> I learned a lot about Google today, too, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, okay, so why don't we get started with some prayer first? Please join us in prayer. Dear Lord, we give thanks once again. Lord, how gracious you are, and you're a good God, and how you look out over us and guide us. And We pray that the message that comes to us tonight and the wisdom from the Bible will speak to our hearts. And may the Holy Spirit dwell amongst us. No matter where we are, dear Lord, we can be thousands of miles away, or one mile away. But we're still together. And as Christ tells us, where there's two or more, there I am also. So please send the Holy Spirit to us and let us delve into your word. In your precious name. Amen. 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 So tonight I will be reading uh, from Matthew chapter 6. And this is verses 14 and 15. If I'm rubbing my eyes, please forgive me. Allergies are just like killing me this time of year. Heating systems, all that. So my eyes get watered up to the point where sometimes I can't even read or see. But uh, please bear with me. So hear now the word of the Lord. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will will not forgive your sins. So say it the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I noticed that our camera keeps on getting a little blurry. I'm not sure if it's a Facebook thing. I'm uh, not sure. Lori said that to me too, but I just, I looked at it a second ago and I and I saw that, so. Hmm. We'll keep our eye on it. Yeah. Sorry about that. I used my phone a lot today, so I charged the batteries before we got on, but hopefully it's not draining it too much. <laughs> So, sobering words here in Matthew. Uh, verses 14 and 15 follow what is widely known as the Lord's Prayer. And uh, verses 14 or 15, um, you know, arguable point, arguable opinion, are sometimes overshadowed by what comes before the Lord's Prayer. But your Father will not forgive your sins if you do not forgive those. So, Forgiveness is not an option. We're told right here to forgive. If we do not, the Lord will not forgive us. And I, for one, know that my sins, I hope, are, you know, spent a lot of time praying about that. And not so much lately, but, you know, in my youth and younger days and whatnot, earlier in my life, I certainly do have a lot to, uh, 
to be forgiven for. So um, enough about that, about me, because it's not about me. So, you know, this forget part, though, is what I focus on Sunday I'd like to talk about tonight. You know, because there's this widely known saying that, oh, forgive and forget. Well, forgive, yes, we see that here in Matthew. What about the forget? We're, who came up with the forget part, okay? I don't <laughs> see that in 14 and 15. And like I said before, I'm a, a student, systematic theology student, okay? So we're talking about the whole Bible. You know, in Micah, we see our sins will be cast into the depths of the sea. Amen. We also see far from the east is from the west is how our sins will be not remembered. And also in Jeremiah and Hebrews, quote, I will, God says, and I will remember their sins no more. So in our translations, I think we, we get some things wrong here um, as far as the forget piece of it. You know, forget means an inability to recall something. So an omniscient God does not forget, okay? If God is forgetting something, we got a problem. <laughs> We've got a big theological problem. But let's talk about remember no more. That's a biblical term. And remember in the Bible, it, it, the terms mean something different. It means God is renewing his work, okay, with a particular person or a particular situation. The example I use is uh, Noah when he was in the ark. In Genesis it says, uh, and God remembered him. Well, God didn't forget he was bouncing around, floating with all these animals, you know, <laughs> for five months. I mean, Noah may have forgotten thought that God forgot about him. But God, when it says he remembered him, it's exactly that. It's time for God to work his will, renew his work in a particular person or a particular situation. So so kind of simplify that, right, in a non-theological way. Okay. Uh, it's good. almost like God is saying, um, I remember no more. So he's almost like hitting the reset button, right? So it's not... It's not in the front of his mind. So if you think about, you know, your computer, right? Well, that, you know, that stuff is still stored somewhere on your hard drive. Um, but when you hit the reset button, you're starting fresh. Right. So basically what I hear you saying is, God's not saying, I'm going to forget. God's saying, I'm choosing to hit the reset button and I'm going to give you a fresh chance. Right. We don't face the wrath of God from our sins. So he remembers them no more when we earnestly and sincerely ask for forgiveness. Right, so, right, so, but you have to be sincere, right? How many people are like, oh, I ask for forgiveness, they don't mean it, right? So, well, then, <laughs> which begs the question, well, it's really hard to forgive somebody. Sometimes you could spend a lifetime deciding that you're not ready to forgive somebody. Well, that's exactly right? it, forgiveness. There's no, time frame it's, but if you wait too long and your number comes up and you haven't forgiven people then then what the bible says is that god's not going to set that reset button he's not going to forgive you either because he's going to say you have plenty of time to forgive and you chose not to forgive because it's a choice although internal it might be a struggle it's still a choice uh, I'm not going to forgive you. And I don't know about you, but man, I don't want my number to come up. And I haven't, there are some people that I have, I'm still struggling my own self to forgive. And cause I don't really think that well, I don't, A, I don't think they, they, they're worthy. <laughs> Let's be truthful. And B, I don't really think they think they did anything. Um, well, let's, let's talk about that for a little against bit. Against me. Yeah. And so I feel like my saying to them. I forgive you for your behavior or your actions or your words or whatever it is, is kind of falling on deaf ears, right? And so it doesn't mean any, it's not, my forgiveness isn't going to mean anything to them because they don't think they did anything wrong. Well, you're skipping ahead. Right. Of where I'm going. Uh, but um, let's talk about, first of all, 
forgiveness within the, within the two realms that we live in, right? There's forgiveness in the spiritual world, which we just started talking about, right. where you earnestly ask for forgiveness, God forgives you. Slate wiped clean. That's in the spiritual world. Here on earth, the forget part causes a lot of confusion and quite honestly, it causes a lot of anger with God, okay? People get confused about that, forget, because they think that, oh, well, as long as somebody has forgiven me, well, then it's all forgotten. It's like nothing happened and we can go back having our, our same relationship. But that's not what God's saying. Well, no, I mean, I mean we're, 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 first of all, we're human, which is not an excuse. But, like you said, sometimes it's a, it's, it's a lengthy, forgiveness is a lengthy process. And, and to tag the forget piece onto somebody that has been wrong, you're almost doing a, a, a double damage, okay? Because, oh, it's up to that person that's been wrong to forget it. And when people don't forget it, you think, oh, well, they're just a terrible Christian or they're a poor person or they're not worthy of the kingdom of heaven when we should forget. No, no, no. Because number one, in the spiritual world, you're forgiven. Number two, in the world itself, in the worldly sense, we face consequences. We face consequences for the way we treat people, for our sins that we commit. So there's these two different realms, okay? And in the worldly sense, you're gonna face consequences. Like for example, um, uh, an alcoholic that can't renew his, his relationships with his children because they've been damaged so much. Those bridges have been burned so badly. And as you say, forgiveness is, can be a lengthy process right. for those bridges take a while to build across that gap again. And it's, it's, it's spiritually damaging when you're throwing this forget piece on people. And it's also causing confusion. Another example, okay, let's use a biblical example. David and Bathsheba, okay. David knew that when he sent Bathsheba's husband off to war that he most likely would die. And as he sent him off to war, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Okay. Now, the Bible tells us that David came back to God, asked for forgiveness, walked in faith again. Okay. Slate wiped clean in the spiritual world. However, in the physical world, he was told the sword would not depart his house. In other words, he was always at war. David would always be at war. Also, he was told his son would dishonor him in public, just as David dishonored Bathsheba's husband in public. And David always wanted to build a magnificent temple for God, but he was told that's not going to happen. Somebody else would build that temple. And also, to add salt to the white gaping wound, that the child he fathered with Bathsheba would soon die a few days after it was born. So you see there's these consequences that happen because of sin's actions and we can't get around that in the worldly in, in a worldly sense. We live in a broken world uh, and things can follow us. That's why you get the term of, you know, you can't live it down. Right. And what I'm also not saying is, oh, well, we got to keep grudges. No. I'll get to that in a little bit here. So there's that two realm. Does that help you out? With yeah, anything? and I think, you know, a comment that one of our uh, our viewers pointed out, which is an excellent one uh, to, to hone in on, is so there are kind of two, two reasons for forgiveness, right? So I should be praying for my own ability to forgive you, for example, okay? And that's for me. It should be for me that I'm looking for to forgive you because I'm the one who wants to be forgiven when I knock at the gate. It's on you if you don't ask for forgiveness from somebody else because you're not going to get forgiveness at the gate, right? So to the point, we 
you know, like everything else in life, right? If you do it for the wrong reasons, it's for the wrong reasons. Asking for forgiveness or granting somebody forgiveness should also be for the right reasons. It's ultimately sure. for the glory of God, for our own forgiveness to honor and to get in. Okay, but, uh, and that's a good point because it makes me self-reflect and say, hmm, I've really been refraining from telling this small group of people that I forgive them for their behavior and their attitude and their unkind words and their actions and the consequences that their behaviors caused me. Uh, I've really been struggling with saying to them, I forgive you. Because I didn't know if I meant it, right? I'm not going to say it if I don't mean it. But I really should be praying for the ability to find peace within my own self to say, that's on you how you behave. I'm going to forgive you because well, it's on you. It brings up... Right? I mean... Ultimately, okay? Ultimately. Uh, forgiveness can only be given to those who want it, okay? There's people in the world that don't care if they hurt you. There's people in the world that hurt you on purpose. There's people in the world that... Um, hurt you on accident. Right. I mean, it's we live in a broken world. To your point, but it shouldn't stop you, and hence my exact point. I'm not... I haven't said I forgive them because I don't really think it matters to them. Well, let's... <laughs> but it matters. Okay, let, it let me use an example. Me. Here's an example. The Pharisees and Jesus, right? The Pharisees thought that they were doing God's work when they murdered Jesus. They were convinced that he was a lawbreaker. They were convinced that he was trouble. They were convinced that they needed to get rid of him. That okay. sounds familiar. So when Jesus went through the resurrection, he was resurrected. You didn't see him trucking off, running right to the Pharisees. No. Did no. you? True, okay. true that. Right. Now, God, granted, he knew what was in their hearts. Okay. But what we're saying is there's people that will do these things on purpose because either A, legalists, we talked about legalists last week, they think they're doing God's work, therefore they are righteous in their actions, or, you know, hurt people, dot, dot, dot. Hurt people. Hurt people will hurt people. Um, real quick, uh, I've had interesting conversations with other pastors, and that, and this also goes for uh, Christians as a whole. It's like either you people are looking you at you to see if you're a good pastor, or they're looking at you to see if you're a good Christian. So therefore, they will mistreat you on purpose. It's their test. Okay, to see if you're worthy, okay? Where they'll be sanctimonious and say, oh, well, you're a Christian. You're supposed to turn the other cheek. Uh, no, okay. Do we turn the other cheek? Yes, depending on the situation. Depending on the situation. Christ also said, if your brother sins, rebuke him, okay? And if he repents, you forgive him. But this also goes further to say, if you see a fellow Christian or brother being abused, rebuke the person that's abusing them. So this whole test thing um, comes up in my mind that, you know what, some people do it on purpose to see if you're, I don't know, yeah, we'll uh, see what the litmus Christian right, test right, right. or litmus pastor's test, yeah. and they do it on purpose. Well, two wrongs don't make a right, right? So it's, I, it's, a, tough, it's a tough situation, and uh, what, I'm not, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that Forgiveness is multi-complex, and to do it biblically, what do we do, right? Number one, biblically, we stop keeping score. And I'm talking about the, the, the big things. I'm not talking about people cutting you off in traffic or flipping you off and things like that. Let that stuff go. Let it go. It's not that important in the kingdom. I'm talking the heavy, deep cuts that leave deep, lasting scars, okay? So stop keeping count. It's a, a score. It's like, well, I called my friend and then three times and she hasn't called me back or he hasn't called me back. Well, come on, really? Your friends, true love, right? Love in the heart. Um, 
Also get a good mirror. We talked about this last week, the 360 mirror. What's the mirror? It's right here. Okay. Well, the like more to you your read, point, the, the rebuke you... thing doesn't mean being the judge and jury either. Rebuke means uh, sticking up for, for what's right. Sticking up for our, uh, another person when they're not being treated properly instead of turning away and make pretend that, well, that's not my problem. You know, as I would say, not my monkeys, not my zoo. Uh, and there are times to say, not my monkeys, not my zoo. And there are times to not. Um, and, and it's difficult, I think, especially when it comes to anything religion-based, to stand up in the first place, <laughs> right? And to stand up against unjust behavior or unjust attitude. And thirdly, to really stand up when it's not being done to you, but it's being done to somebody else that matters to you. Or maybe they don't matter to you. Anyways, uh, so, so it's uh, kind it's, of multifold. But you know, did, does God, did, did Christ say, turn the other cheek? Yes, indeed he did. Did he forgive the soldiers when he was on the cross? Absolutely he did. Again, it depends on the situation. The fourth thing to help you with forgiveness is to let God be God, okay? I preached about this Sunday and that we can't help it. We want revenge, right? It's that R word, revenge, right? right. You don't pay evil with evil. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> no tire slashing no, recommended. No evil, no eye for eye type of thing, uh, okay? It's turning vengeance over to God. The Apostle Paul talked about this. He talked about this after he was mistreated and wronged by Alexander. He even prayed to God to um, um, hand him over to Satan. But later in Romans, or in Romans 12, 19, he said, Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Only the Lord has the right to judge. Only God knows what's in people's hearts, okay? Now, is it tough? Yeah. Um, I'm not saying it's easy. But you let God be God. You leave it at his feet, just like we do with our concerns and our worries. And if you can't do that, if you can't do those four things, stop keeping score, right? Let, um, um, get, get the good mirror, right? Let God be God. Rebuke when wrong and forgive when asked. The last thing um, is pray for pray for a, a change of feelings, okay? Uh, pray to God that you may feel differently about this person or the situation. Or that person might have a change of feelings. Exactly. Or a change of behavior or a change of attitude, right? So, I mean, I, I think it's, it's uh, you know, probably one of the more difficult topics, probably one of the more difficult things because, you know, you the 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 person who feels the worst is the person who's on the receiving end right. and so the person uh doing something against you may not necessarily even realize that they've hurt your feelings they may not be doing it intentionally or whatever but fact of the matter remains i'm a firm believer that if you don't mean it then you shouldn't extend forgiveness i shouldn't say that i forgive you if in my heart, I really don't. Well, that's total hypocrisy to me. Yeah, I'm not advocating any right, but you know grudges what I'm or anything. I know what you exactly because what you're again, saying. I could say I forgive you, forgive you, forgive you, forgive you all day long, right? And then when I get to the gate, he's gonna go, "Yeah, I know that you weren't sincere, Sheila." <laughs> like my mom said, "If you can't say anything nice, don't say, say anything, anything at all." Nice. Kind so, of the same thing. So here's here's the. The trump card, if you will, is that Christ died on the cross for sins he never committed. He died for your sins. He died for my sins. He died for all of our sins. And to forgive people that have no right to be forgiven brings us closer to being Christ-like. Okay? Difficult. But that's the sum of it. Right. Okay. So... As Christ said here, if you do not forgive their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So, again, that mirror and thinking long and hard about forgiveness is something. So, do we have any comments? I mean, this is a, a tough subject. 
I'm sure we do. Yeah, we had some, you know, uh, the point out the movie The Shack is a great one uh, to reference forgiveness and issues. The Shack? Um, yeah, The Shack. The Shack. Uh, yeah, it's been cool. out. I think you can watch it on Netflix or Prime, have the book, uh, probably on Amazon. Okay. Um, somebody else says, you know, what I just said, you, you can say that you're going to forgive everybody, but you have to mean it. And then don't continue with the same behavior. You can't say, I'm sorry, and then do the same thing. I'm sorry, and then just say, I'm sorry, do the same thing. That's not, that's not, that's not being sincere. It's not. Um, and, uh, right, exactly. And then, and to your point, you know, um, pray about it, right? They're, you're like, hey, Lord, you know, help me find the strength to be nice to that person. Help me find the courage to forgive that person. You know, help me set the reset button on my own life. You know, uh, help me be a better person, right? God knows, you know, I got a stack of it. So, you know, if you're in the midst of forgiveness and you can't forget some something, it's okay. There's a difference. There's a difference. We're, forgiving is an absolute something that we're told we have to do. But the forget part, mm, you know, I'm not encouraging any grudges, like I said. And also, like I said, Christ died on the cross, okay? He had, he would have every reason, you know, not to forgive us. But he did. So with that in mind... Well, and forgetting, it, it, to me, is like saying, uh, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. And, it, and you're all, there's a part of you that's always going to feel badly for whatever the situation is, no matter if you've extended forgiveness or not. A perfect song to uh, listen to... With, with with I think really the words hit this whole struggle home is forgiveness by Matthew West. Uh, oh, we yeah. sang it um, Church. in our in our uh, service on uh, Sunday last week. Um, again, I apologize we can't broadcast that. We're still trying to kind of gather up some of those funds to be able to get that um, streaming license. Uh, and that way we can share that with you because uh, we try and pick music that's relevant to the message um, and and forgiveness by Matthew West. Take a listen to the words. Uh, I don't. I really don't think it can make it any clearer uh, as to the struggle that we all have when even contemplating: Should I forgive you? Can I forgive you? Don't want to forgive you. Well, hey, what's well, up? Uh... Let's close from prayer, and then we'll take we'll talk about what's coming up next. How's that? All right. Dear Lord, we give thanks that your Son Jesus Christ died on our cross; that He does indeed forgive those who have no right to be forgiven. And let us leave room for your grace, dear Lord, for people that we struggle to forgive. That indeed you have the power to change hearts, and we've seen it. Lord, please bless everybody that watches this and please bless us in the ministry to bring your message and your word into the world. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So um, if you've been to our Facebook page, right on the top of the Facebook page, you'll see that we have uh, roses for residents. So what we're doing is we're going to give roses to uh, the residents of the Good Samaritan Assisted Living Home. And if we do raise enough funds, there's also other assisted living homes, um, nursing homes within our area here, and in a hospital that we will deliver uh, roses to uh, residents on Valentine's Day. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've heard told many times, uh, Valentine's Day is a Hallmark holiday. It's not really a holiday. Okay, fact of the matter is, I can't think of too many people they don't feel kind of crappy when Valentine's Day comes and they don't have a Valentine. I mean, even in school, we're making those little Valentines in kindergarten <laughs> and first grade, right? And the highlight was getting little candy hearts with a message from that cute boy in your class, that cute girl in your class. Everybody loves Valentine's Day. Uh, and so many people, um, they don't have family or, you know, all their friends have passed away uh, or maybe they're widowed or widower or whatever. And... And, um, you know, what a perfect opportunity to give back to them, right? Uh, they're not going to be expecting it because nobody ever gives them anything on Valentine's Day. They're in the assisted living facility. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I just think it's a nice gesture. And if there's, you know, anything that you can contribute, that will be 
that would be great. We are a tax deductible thing, so you can, you know, use your contribution on your taxes. And tax season's right around the corner. We need every savings that we so can get. Just click on the donate button, and uh, it'll take you to our website. Just below the home page, there's another donate button. Click on that. There's no and minimum. We take uh, <laughs> no minimum, and we take PayPal. So yes, <laughs> indeed. So um, thank you for watching us Saturday. Saturday at five is the next time that we'll be live streaming. Uh, actually, the sermon will be around five fifteen. Um, we've had to change it from Sunday to Saturday, not because of football. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Uh, we had some. Uh, <laughs> have to be away <laughs> <laughs> we have to be away in the hospital and things like that so uh saturday 5 15 and then we'll get back on the wednesday schedule on the 23rd yep all right awesome hey thanks again thank you so much for all your feedback we appreciate it take care